I know I notice sometimes if I'm walking, he will be staring at me. Maybe I feel okay, maybe he's trying to observe me as a girl who's trying to grow. But mommy, I don't like this, Pastor. I don't like him. She was like, shut up your mouth. I know you're very, very possessed. And that's why I keep sending you to that house so that you'll be delivered. From 15 years, he started molesting me. He would drag me to his room and he would start touching me, start kissing me, start doing a lot of things. When I tried saying something, he would want me not to. He would tell me that if I should say a word or if anyone should hear about it, it's going to cost me. My mom decided to give me to him, like ask him to take me. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. You guys already know how we do it here. No use of name, no uni no use of any means of identification. As you guys can see now, I've even added more things. So if you want to come, you can come. Your identity is safe and secure with us. So we have a guest here today, and I'm just going to allow her to start speaking. So, my dear, over to you. My life has been a mess since I was 15. And all this trauma has been cursed through someone who is bigger, who have been respected. Someone very big, a pastor at that, a well-respected man of God. It was at my teenage age, at 15 years, there's this man of God that came to my place. So he was doing a lot of miracles and a lot of things. He was well known. People were coming from different places to see him, making sure they are committed to him because of his name and things he did. He did a lot of miracles. So from there, we we started. Um, I and my mom do we do go to um, different places because of our condition. Then, since we're not working great with us, since our dad left, since has been moving upside down. So. My mom believes in this. She's this kind of miracle person. Anywhere she has, there's um, a crusade going on. She must attend. So as this pastor came, so my mom already gone to meet him. So we became close. As usual, anyone that comes around do like me. I don't know how that grace that people do like me. This man started getting interest in me. As a young girl, I, I was thinking maybe he's liking me because of uh, the kind of, let me say, grace, because people do like me. So he always want me close to him. And my mom was very comfortable with that, with that so, so comfortable with it. She always want me close to him. So little by little, we started getting closer. Each time we are done with um, Sunday service, he will ask me to come over to the house. And my mom was very cool with it. She sees nothing wrong with it. So anytime we finish a um, church program, I will just go to his house. He would tell me to come help him in the house. So each time I go to his house, Sometimes he, he started by looking at me somehow. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I was too young for that. I don't even understand anything at that point. And did you ever tell your mother that the pastor was looking at you somehow? At that point, I don't really understand anything. I don't really understand it. Okay, it keeps happening when he started making moves. Yeah, he started touching me, started drawing me closer to him. So I tried complaining to my mom. I tried telling her. I wanted to open up to her, 
but she never gave me listening ear. She feels I'm possessed, like she always said. Sherry, have you ever gone to your mother to say, oh, this pastor is in so so thing to me, and she, she didn't say anything to you? Well, as a child, then, there are some things I don't see as a problem, though I know I notice sometimes if I'm walking, he will be staring at me. Maybe I feel, okay, maybe he's trying to observe me as a girl who's trying to grow. But when he started dragging me closer, touching me, so I went to my mom and I was like, mommy, I don't like this pastor. I don't like him. She was like, shut up your mouth. I know you're very, very possessed. And that's why I keep sending you to that house so that you'll be delivered. So I tried making move to let my mom know that, okay, this is what's happening, but she's actually not giving me the space to, she feels maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'm trying to be wayward or I'm complaining to, or maybe, yes, or maybe she thinks the, the um, maybe I'm doing a lot of housework in this guy's house. Why, whenever I go over there, I don't even, it end, it's always end up in bed. Yes, it ends up being from 15 years, he started molesting me. He would drag me to his room and he would start touching me, start kissing me, start doing a lot of things. When I tried saying something, he would want me not to. He would tell me that if I should say a word or if anyone should hear about it, it's going to cost me. He would threaten me with the miracles he'd been doing that. I've seen how he's doing miracle, how he heals people, how he, he can cause, he can do this one, he can do that one. If I try it, it will cost me. It will cost me. My life will become miserable. All my life, I will never see anything good. So I became scared. At this point, I've decided to keep it to myself. Even my mom, I don't even want to tell anybody. I just want to live with it, but to fight it. So it became worse. How? Because my mom decided to give me to him, like ask him to take me. He said he wanted me to be closer to him. Uh, I should be under him so he, he can watch me properly. I told my mom, mommy, I don't want it, though I know we really don't have money at that time, and I was still schooling. It was really difficult for my mom to, to provide and, and pay for my school fees. I understand, I understand totally, but sending me to that man's house was a very big mistake that my mom ever did, and I don't think I will ever forgive her because I tried explaining things to her. Some mothers won't give you listening ear. She never did. She did not. So finally, when I moved in to this man of God's house, it became worse. I don't even sleep at night. I don't even sleep at night. She doesn't have a wife, children, nothing. At that point, nobody is in his house. I don't even know if he's married or not, but I'm not sure. I think he's a a younger, yes, is a single man. I feel so. You know, he came to my place. It's not as if I actually know where he's from, where his um, family is from, or something. He came for crusade, so from there he started staying. So I don't really know anything deep about this man. Even my mom don't even know him that deep. Based on all this, daddy, 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 something. When they see uh, somebody doing miracle, they are already attached. They have started serving the person as God already. So I don't have any deep details about this man, about him, his family, or married or something. So that's how it continues. Each time he comes to the room, it's always even when I'm not in the mood, even when I'm not ready for it, I'm just a story. This is what I'm used for. So, um, how did you break free from him? I continued, I continued with this. 
I keep fighting it till one day I I just stood my ground. I don't even know how I did it. I was crying, crying, crying. So I, I decided to make a move. I went to the kitchen, I took a knife and I kept it in my wardrobe. So that night when he came in, I treated him, I told him that if he should come any closer to me that I'm, I'm going to stop him. So that's how he, he left me. But he still didn't stop. He didn't stop. Until one day, I, I decided to pack my things and leave his place. This man useless to my life. Do you know, he got me pregnant the first time. And he asked me to abort it. <laughs> That's not the last one. The second one, he still asked me to. The, the, the thing is that he's the one doing it by himself. I don't even know how he who gave him all the knowledge, all the things he's, give, he's been given to me, the drugs and everything. He will be the one, he will be the one to do it by himself because he wouldn't want anybody to know about it. He continued with it till the last one. That was when I stood my ground. That, that was when I, I took a knife to, to treat him. That, that was when I said, I'm not going, I'm, I won't continue with this anymore. This is how I, I fought it and I ran away from the house. And with all of this that was happening, your mother never came to visit you for one day. You just left you there. My mom can only call him and he will tell him I'm fine. I'm okay. Everything is okay. Did, he, did she ever call you to ask you if you were okay to talk to her on the phone? I don't have a phone then. I told you, we were actually not, things were not going fine. My mom struggled to pay my school fees. So, who, there's no one to get me a cell phone. I don't even have, it's through him that I can talk to my mom. And whenever I want to speak to my mom, he will be there. So there's no way I can start telling mom things in front of him. So each time I even try to say something, he will say, it's okay, it's okay, she's fine. He will conclude and end the call. I'm really sorry you had to go through that. Nobody, nobody should ever, ever have to go through that and also in the hands of a man that calls himself the man of God. Now, one thing, if you don't learn anything from this video, as a mother, learn this because, nah, the way religion is like eating deep into us, to the extent that you see, because he's a man of God, he's doing miracle. You carry your children. Oh yeah, go and answer daddy. Go and clean daddy's house. Go and wash plate. <sighs> See, when it comes to your children, suspect everybody. People should be coming down. And if your child is telling you, I don't want to go back to this place. I don't want to go back to this place. Stop sending them back to that place that they said they don't want to go back to. And if you're a good mother, you would want to know why your children are complaining and saying they don't want to go back to a place that you seem, you think is a safe environment for them. Don't forget to share this video to as many as possible. You might be saving somebody out there. And my dear, I'm sorry that you went through that and I'm glad that you're free from this person, you also said you don't want to mention the person's name, so yeah. And But if you are this man of God out there, one day your karma will meet you. One day. And I'm sure she's not the only person that you've done this to. The day they will decide to speak up, I pray and I hope that the law will do its course. I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye.